Let's go to Liberal MP Zoe McKenzie, who joins us from Melbourne. Good to talk to you, Zoe. I've got to talk about these climate wars. Um, now, I, I don't care how activist anyone is about the climate, and we all vary in, you know, how how alarmed we are about the climate, but the, the whole world knows the goal that everyone signed up to is net zero by 2050. So what on earth does it matter where Australia is in six years' time in 2030? Look, I think Peter Dutton's been really clear today, as have others been over the weekend, that indeed we are committed to the Paris Agreement and we are committed to net zero. We have a different approach from Labor as to how we will get there. We want all options on the table, including nuclear. We know there are problems with Labor's maths. We know that to get to this 43 per cent by 2030, 82 per cent of our energy has to come from renewable sources. Right now, it's 40. So you do the maths and you tell me how we're going to get there in six years' time. What we're saying is be sensible and, for once, be honest, right? We're not the party of hypocrisy that goes out and promises the world and then fails to deliver when in government. I'm still waiting for my $275 reset of the cost of my energy bills rather than just a $75 handout every quarter that won't reset anything. It won't make it any easier for the households and small businesses in my electorate who are getting squashed by energy bills, 25% in terms of gas and 18% in terms of electricity. We are taking to the election a comprehensive energy and climate change plan that will reset the cost base and will make it more affordable. We're not going to shackle Australian industries and make it harder for Australian households. It just seems such an idiotic argument to argue about 2030. But, but to stay in Paris, do you have to actually give a nod to that? Do you have to actually sign up as a government to a particular figure for 2030? So everybody signed up to a particular target and obviously through the COP process, and I went to COP27 in Egypt, there is pressure on everyone to, to stretch, to, to do their best. But we now know, based on the maths, it looks like the EU will fail to get there and so will the US. And just before, Chris, you made some points in relation to Europe on the weekend. You kind of know I'm a Europhile. I speak, I speak French and German and pretty bad Spanish. But I was watching the French news yesterday and 31% of people in Europe, in, sorry, in France voted for Le Rassemblement National, which is the, the furthest right party in France. And the entire debate through the day from their politicians was about cost of living. So people are crying out for political parties that actually listen to them and say, hey, what's going on? Bread is costing me 15% more. Cheese is 23% more. Ice cream is 17% more. If you look at the CPI between two years ago and now, the basket of goods make nothing, almost nothing is going backwards. Everything is getting harder to afford. And chief amongst it, energy. Yeah, well, this is the challenge for the coalition now, is to outline your nuclear energy policy and one that can actually make power cheaper. Now, you might be able to make that argument for the long term, a decade hence, but uh, how are you going to get power prices down in the medium term? Exactly. And that's why we have an everything-on-the-table approach to the energy market. We also want to make sure we incentivise and reward investment in a stable energy market. We want all options on the table, not just two, which is what we're trying to do with wind and solar. That won't work in terms of baseload. We must have a broader approach. You can see state governments already sort of eking out a longer life for their coal-fired power. Let's just be honest about what we need. How we get to 2050 net zero without destroying the Australian economy on the way there. Yeah, good stuff, Zoe. Thanks for joining us. Zoe McKenzie there, Liberal MP.